Welcome back to Regular Guys Outdoors. I'm Chris. This is a review of and my take on the Savage B Mag rifle. This rifle came out about four and a half years ago and it was designed for the 17 Winchester Super Magnum. Now that's uh, been advertised as the world's fastest rim fire and uh, it's a pretty nice cartridge. But I immediately developed a love-hate relationship for it and I like to start with the love at first. The love is, it's a powerful cartridge. Look at the size of it compared to a 20 grain 17 HMR and the 40 grain 22 Magnum. This particular 17 WSM load is the 25 grainer from Winchester. Now also, this is from an older clip from a Redneck Triple Crown. A couple of these shots here show the power in action on Prairie Dogs. Oh, you got them good. <laughs> so it's nice when your power translates on target downrange. So that's a lot of fun on Prairie Dogs. And I love the AccuTrigger. It's a good trigger. So, I mean, it's got that going for it. Power, good trigger. So when you're hitting your target, it is definitely a lot of fun. Uh, the problem was hitting the target. Uh, it was very inconsistent. And the problem is this stock that it's in. It's very flimsy. The, the barrel runs down the left side of this channel and we'll get you'll see the left side remember that um, it's just a real flimsy cheap stock it's a shame because it's a it's a pretty good rifle so what I learned was after a while to not put any pressure up here rest the rifle right where the magazine fits in and then I could get some pretty good groups uh, but it was still inconsistent, but every once in a while you'd throw some really good groups. Uh, so I knew the rifle had potential. I saved a bunch of targets, and let me show you a couple of those targets now. Alright, so here's some of those inconsistencies. Here's a 20 grain Hornady load group. And here's another couple Hornadies. Here's a 20 grain Winchester load there there and there Winchester 25 grain loads right there right there 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 and there so you see erratic groups ranging almost an inch in diameter so then when I learned to sh uh, hold and support down by the magazine like I said earlier I got this with the 25 grainers. That's when I realized I need to restock this rifle because it has a lot of potential. A couple of things that are quirky but don't don't bother me at all. The firearm is a cock on close, which means when you close the bolt, that's when it cocks. So it's hard. So you opens up easy, closes easy until you get right right toward the end here and then you gotta cock it to close um, it's a little quirky doesn't bother me at all no big deal um, the other thing that doesn't bother me anymore is the amount of misfires I had so many times you're lining up on a prairie dog and you go tink you do another round tink nothing would happen um, that's pretty much been eliminated and I think that's due to old ammo or when the ammo first came out poor quality control um, that's, that's the only thing I could figure so you see I thought the rifle had good potential um, and I watched Cave Dweller 1959 on YouTube he had Savage B Mag same problems he explains why you have those problems and shows how he fixed it so I went ahead and I, I went along his route. I bought my Boyd stock, which is here. And my intent was to see how the accuracy was before glass bedding it and then after glass bedding it. Um, so I put the stock on the rifle.
One thing of note is the barrel is still on the left side of the stock. I don't know what it is about that, but it sure loves that left side. Alright, let's see if the magazine fits right off the get-go. Boom. I went to the range and the trigger wouldn't work. Cock it, load it, it would just be spongy. So I, am I on safe? Nope. Spongy. Do it again. Spongy. I don't know what was up with that. I still don't know what was up with that. So I bring the rifle home and say, well, I took it out of the stock. Worked just fine. Click. Click. Put it back in the stock. Tighten everything down. Click. Click. Everything's fine. It's dry firing just like it's supposed to. Um, so I have no idea what that was, but since I was home again, I went ahead and glass bed the action according to Cave Dweller 1959's instructions in his video. So this first dot is the barrel support. These two dots are showing me how deep the epoxy has to be. Now I think the only thing I did different was I made these two dams to make sure the epoxy doesn't run forward or back of where I want. And I roughed up the wood. In the back here I drilled two little holes and roughed it up so that the epoxy had something to bite into and get into the stock. Uh, that back area is going to control the rear, make sure it doesn't have any left or right in the very rear end of the gun. Down there you can see the gray down inside the grooves. You can see a little bit of blue right there on the angled part of the receiver. That's the clay. And same thing over here. The barrel now is nicely centered. We'll see how this sets up. So it's been sitting for 24 hours. Moment of truth. Will it come out of the stock? All right, so here's our bedding up here. See the rings correspond with those. So that'll give it kind of like a recoil lug. I'll remove the clay. And down here in the back, you see the gray from the epoxy. That's gonna help me make sure there's no side to side extra movement. The screw is still free floating didn't get any in there and I didn't get any in the rest of this so looks like we still got a good functional rifle the stock is bedded hopefully that'll be it all right well the left and right of the barrel and the stock did not hold it's not completely mashed on the left edge but as you can see it definitely is riding the left edge BMAG just loves that left edge. Well, check this out. It's closer to the left edge than the right edge, but right down to the bedding. So the bed job went really great, and off to the range I go. I bring the target back home, and you can probably tell by the enthusiasm in my voice in this clip that uh, I was really happy with the results. First range session with the Savage B-Mag since I restocked and glass bed the action. My little chart as normal. The 25 grainers here, they shot awesome. We got a 0.72, a 0.9, a 0.4, and a 0.87. You'll notice this guy out there, that was my first shot on that one and I knew I pulled it. When the crosshair slides off to the right and it goes bang, you know it's bad. So that one's disregarded in, as far as that group goes. Uh, the Hornady 20 grainers didn't shoot very well, uh, nor did the 20 grainer from Winchester. Those were only one group of piece, so not necessarily indicative, but I think my rifle prefers the 25 grainer, which is fine, because that's actually what I want to shoot. 
and now my Savage VMAG is a viable rifle. Well, since it's shooting so good, I'm going to try it out on some prairie dogs. Jeff, I got to borrow your hat, buddy. I can't find mine. You wear it better than I do. Something down here deflects my round. And the 17 does not do very good with obstacles. But he stays at the top of the hole and hangs around, so don't mind if I do. This is what happens when you get one pop up at 20 yards and you don't have anything in the chamber. By the time you get one in, they disappear. Double. There's three prairie dogs on the screen. I'm going to shoot this one right here and watch the reaction of this one. Rolls off the mound and then gets back up and stands up. So since he's given me a good target, I don't mind if I do. Now this one on the right, I've got to scoot me and the camera over to get a good shot at it. Here's the aftermath. One fell down the hole, one fell off the side, and this one over here ended up kicking and falling down the hole. I'm also eating the jerky you left behind, Jeff. So now my love-hate relationship with this rifle is just one about love. Savage now offers it with these laminate Boyd stocks, and I also believe they have a thumb hole version if you like that. Uh, it's a worthwhile upgrade uh, over this piece of junk that came with it originally. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's another couple you might enjoy. Give us a subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.